What's going on folks, Earthmaster here, jumping in on this Thursday evening, September 3rd, 2020, 8.31 p.m. West Coast time here. Just going to do a very quick update video. Um, not a whole lot to report out there as far as any major movement goes. Uh, looking at the Earthquake 3D globe shows still some obvious activity out there in the Chile region. South America there with the latest earthquake on the globe, that 4.2 magnitude quake striking in the green flag right there. Also some earthquake activity within the South America and Antarctica region there, 5.0 and a 4.9 within this area. You guys can see that uh, little ridge there. So some uh, interesting movement down there. Other than that, not a whole lot of activity report, folks. A very deep earthquake over here. Uh, towards the nor towards the northern Indonesia Islands area, 4.5 earthquake striking there at uh, 592 kilometers below the surface. That's pretty deep. That's almost 600 kilometers uh, down there, folks. It's uh, majorly some deep movement there. Let's go ahead and swing over to a different map here and show you guys. And let's see if we can do that. Yes, we can. There we go. Okay, there's a little bit of specs on that 4.5 there. Uh, the USGS has this at 261 kilometers south southeast of Latung, Lat Lat okay, Latung, Philippines. Latung, is that right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, there's the depth of that earthquake there, 592 kilometers. Historical activity out there, pretty uh, spectacular, no doubt. Shows quite a bit of uh, earthquake activity in this region there. What what's interesting, I guess, right? There's that word again that some folks don't like, like, but I will definitely use it time and time again. Interesting. I'll say that a thousand times if I want to, right? Uh, is the depth of this earthquake out there. And that's what uh, kind of concerning there because when we do see deeper movement out there, it kind of kind of points towards possible, right? Possible further large scale movement there at the surface. So. It's been relatively quiet, still relatively quiet out here in the western part of, of the Pacific Ring of Fire. But uh, overall, you know, it's uh, we'll see what happens out here. They did have that earthquake out there in Florida, Georgia, or uh, not Georgia, but uh, Alabama region there. 3.8, that was originally, when I did the update video early this morning, a 4.0 magnitude quake there. And of course, uh, quite a few folks out there reported feeling that uh, within the region there. Not a uh, not a major shaker out there, but no doubt quite a few folks definitely uh, reported that earthquake there. Um, as you can tell right there on the map from the uh, USGS there. I was just kind of glancing over um, historical earthquake activity there since 1900. 6.0 magnitude quakes and above there you can see uh, some dramatic earthquake activity of course that kind of squared in within the region here or at least rectangled in within the area usgs has this really cool function there if you go to uh what's well, up here in the uh, settings here and you can go to uh the catalog data i have it set from uh today back to uh Oh, well, yeah, 1900 right there, magnitude 6.5, and then some settings just to include Alaska, Canada, and the United States right there. And uh, you can see all the activity that's taking place. And of course, still, if you zoom in to the southern part of the San Andreas Fault here, not a whole lot of activity within this area over the last 120 years, though. Of course, outside of the region, inland on the Pacific Plate side, or the uh, North, Am North American Plate side, obvious activity right and also down here along the San Jacinto Fault area uh, and areas into the Imperial Fault as well seeing some major releases but still nothing out here along the San Andreas Fault so that's gonna change pretty soon we will see it change there's no doubt I see a lot of a lot of folks asking when will Kansas get an earthquake when will the Cascadia subduction zone go well take a look at this earthquake activity over the last 120 years with the Cascadia subduction zone, 6.0 and above. A lot of activity along the Mendocino Triple Point Junction here, along the southern end of the Gorda Escarpment. A lot of pressure, obviously, being bunched up here. And of course, the Cascadia subduction zone here locked 
and being crumpled into valleys and and ridges and you know eventually this will blow so to speak and uh, there'll no doubt be a major quake out there but I thought it was kind of cool just going back on the uh, earthquake activity out there. I use this sometimes. Uh, a lot of folks don't know about the uh, historical catalog there in the USGS but you can find quite a bit of data out there uh, including uh, you know anything. I look up stuff from from a long time ago. Here's 6.0 back in 1993. You can see the Hebgen Lake earthquake. Uh, there's the Salt Lake City earthquake activity. I think there was another one here. Uh, let's see here. Where did it go? Where's the one I'm looking for? I don't know. There's a lot. It's cluttered right now. But uh, you can kind of customize that and whatnot. So, uh, Looking at the trimmer map, folks. The most recent trimmer map here from today see the date up there September 3rd 2020 right 2020 major increase right there in southern Oregon still some activity up there in Vancouver Island uh, but pretty large increase in activity here south of Eugene it looks like there this is the Cascadia subduction zone once again um, activity trimmer movement way down there in the subducting area of the North American and the Juan de Fuca plate that's being um, shredded to pieces and molted and melted way down there. So a little bit of activity down there um, going on. Kind of have to watch that. Yellowstone National Park, uh, which I like to cover a lot. Pretty quiet. Extraordinarily quiet. Extraordinarily, yes. That is the word I used. Anyway, we're going to jump off here, folks. Have a good night. Uh, we'll catch you guys a little bit later here. Uh, I'm just going to think I'm going to call it a night. Kind of tired out here. Of course, got to finish up my barbecue, right? Or else I'll end up with some beef jerky in the morning, which I don't want. Uh, so I guess i got to stay up for a little bit longer. But anyway, have a good night, folks. Okay. Live stream looks like it's running successfully um, ever since I removed the weather widget. You know, that widget may have been causing me some major issues there with my live stream. So make sure you don't use Bing Weather. That's the application that I use there. Bing Weather app. Uh, just keep an eye on it. It may be some type of Trojan horse, some type of uh, backdoor involved in that application there. So have a good night. Peace out. Talk to you guys later.